Well, good morning. It is Friday morning, October 8th. Thanks so much for joining me today. It looks like we've got a little bit of rain in the forecast uh, for today and maybe tomorrow even. Some drizzles. Uh, doesn't look like anything uh, huge, but uh, definitely might get us a little wet. So uh, go out and dress accordingly. Today we're going to turn to the New Test Testament, to the Gospel of Mark for our scripture reading. Mark 10, beginning with verse 17. So listen. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go, sell what you own, and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields, with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The stories of God, for the people of God, thanks be to God. Today we have a couple of authors for our reflections from the Daily Feast. The first is written by James J. Thompson. What then are the relationships between faith and reward, or virtue and wealth? Why must this man give up his riches in order to follow Jesus? What will he get in return? A standard answer is that there is nothing wrong with wealth itself. The problem is not wealth per se, but our attitude toward it. As we accumulate riches, we are tempted to trust in our possessions and our powers of acquiring them, rather than in God, for our ultimate security and comfort. Even honestly acquired and generously shared wealth can thus lead to pride. This is why it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. It is hard to let go of the immediate basis of our security and comfort. And the more we have, the harder it gets. And from Charles L. Campbell. Rather than receiving the kingdom in complete dependence as a little child, the rich man wants to know what he can do to inherit eternal life. Indeed, this tension is present even in his question. One can rarely do anything for an inheritance. By definition, an inheritance is something a person can only be given. 
And here are our questions to ponder uh, for this scripture. Who can live a kingdom life? How can we change? How can we take the necessary first steps? Those are such great questions. In the uh, reflections that I read, there was one thing that really stuck out to me. Um, and it was in the second one by uh, Charles Campbell. His statement about one can rarely do anything for an inheritance. By definition, an inheritance is something a person can only be given. And that really kind of struck me. Uh, just kind of a, one of those aha moments. An inheritance isn't something that you do to get. Um, it is given. And um, so it kind of changes that whole story, doesn't it? If, uh, if we truly inherit, then um, why not share what we have? Why not give some of what we have. Uh, do we have to give all? I don't know. What I do know is that it is important for us to be aware of those around us that need our help, that need a hand up. And there are many. We forget that. And I think that in our security, it is easy to look at those that do not have and think that perhaps they aren't working hard enough or at all, or they deserve to be where they are. And there are some of, of us out there that think that way, sadly. And perhaps there are some that um, don't want to put forth effort. However, I do believe that most do. So to, um, to not share what we have, that's on us. That's on us. So think about that as we move through the weekend. Will you pray with me? When we are weak, your strength is all the more evident in our life. Thank you for allowing us to glorify you. Thank you for the inheritance. Thank you for reminding us of our role of sharing what we have, being generous, following the example of Christ. May we continue to strive to be more and more like Christ in our lives. Amen. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you have a great weekend. Don't forget to reach out, connect with someone. Join us for worship at 1030 on Sunday if you're looking for a place to worship in person, 6251 Gladys Street, or right here online. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you all on Monday.